Often when making a game, you need your characters to interact with things around them. Sometimes they need to pick up objects, sometimes they need to aim in the right direction, and sometimes they just need to place their hands and feet correctly on the environment. This used to be a pretty complicated task, but luckily Unity has added a feature called animation rigging that makes it so much easier. It's currently in preview, but most of the big features have already been implemented. But before we jump into Unity and start using it, let's have a look at how animation rigging works. Also, this video is sponsored by Unity. So normally when we have an animated character in Unity, it consists of a few things. A base object with an animated component. This controls what animations to play. As a child of this object is the mesh itself. This normally has a skinned mesh renderer component and is responsible for rendering the character itself. And finally, we have the character skeleton, often called the rig. This is a hierarchy of game objects that make up the individual bones of our character. For example, this character has a pelvis bone that leads to the spine, that leads to the thighs, that leads to the calf, and then the foot. So character animation basically works in three steps. The character plays an animation determined by the animator, the bones are then moved around by that animation, and the mesh of the character then shapes itself to follow the bones using the skinned mesh renderer. But what if we don't know beforehand exactly where we want our bones to go? Animations are fixed, so they don't always fit perfectly with the interactive parts of our game. Say for example we want a character to look towards the player. Well in this case we need to change the rotation of the head while the game is running depending on the position of the player. But we can't do that if an animation is already controlling our head bone. This is where animation rigging comes in. With animation rigging, we basically create an extra rig on top of the original one that then overrides part of that animation. Think of this like a much simpler rig, which only has the controls that we need. In this case, we would create a rig with a multi-aim constraint. This component would reference the bone that we want to control, in this case the head bone, as well as a new object that we create to act as the target. When we then play, we can see that our original animation plays just fine, but our head rotation is being controlled by the new rig. This allows us to do many things just using different kinds of constraints, especially when it comes to the character interacting with objects. So with that explanation, let's jump into Unity and try it out. So I'm here in Unity and as you can see I'm using version 2020.1. Animation rigging will also work with 2019.3, but Unity have added some nice convenience features to make setup easier in the new version. And the first thing that we want to do is go ahead and install the animation rigging package. But it's currently in preview, so first we have to make sure to enable preview packages. To do this, we go under edit, go to the project settings, go under package manager, and make sure to check enable preview packages. With that, we can simply open up the package manager window. So we'll go window, package manager, here at the top, we'll make sure to show all packages. And now we can just search for animation. And here is the animation rigging package. Let's simply select that and install it. And that's it. The package is now ready to be used. Now, as you can see, I've gone ahead and set up this very simple example scene with just a camera, a ground and a character. And with all the talk of bones, I thought that nothing would be more appropriate than an actual skeleton. The skeleton character here is freely available on the asset store. We'll of course have a link for that in the description. Now this character has an animator here that if we hit play, just plays the idle animation over and over. We can see that inside of the animator window. But remember, we could be playing any kind of animation and we can easily switch between them while overriding some of this movement. But we'll see that later. Now, the first thing that I recommend you do is set up animation rigging to show some of the bones that are making up our character. And we can actually do this really easily by simply selecting our character, going animation rigging and selecting bone renderer setup. As you can see, this adds a component that references all of the transforms that make up our rig. This is our rig here and these are all of the different bones inside of that rig. And as you can see, they're all referenced here and it simply displays them inside of the scene view. We can go ahead and change the size of the bones, the color and the shape. But for now, the default settings are going to do just fine. And this is not only going to show the bones, it's also going to allow us to select them using our mouse, which is just really handy. Now, the second thing that we're going to do is create a rig. Remember, animation rigging works by creating an extra rig on top of our original one that is going to modify our movement. To do that, again, we just select our character. We go animation rigging and hit rig setup. And as you can see, that creates another component. This is the rig builder, which now has a rig layer called rig one. And if we click that, we can see that this is an object that is now under our character called rig one with a simple rig component. 
So this is where we're going to be building our rig. In other words, we are going to be adding constraints under this object. If, for example, we wanted the head of our character to be constantly looking at a target, we could go ahead and add a multi-aim constraint. So I'm going to right click on this object here and create a new empty object under it. I'm going to rename this object to head aim. And I'm going to go ahead and add a component here, go under animation rigging. And here we can see all the different constraints. I'm going to select multi aim constraint. Now here we need to fill out a few things. The first one is the constrained object. This is what we want our constraint to apply to. In our case, that's the head, since we want to be controlling the head with this component. So I'm going to go under our skeleton here, and I'm going to go ahead and find the head and drag that in. Then we have the aim axis. In our case, that is going to be the Y axis. And finally, we have the source objects. In other words, the target that we're going to be aiming towards. You can create multiple targets here and blend between them. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and create one target. So let's go under our hit aim here. Let's right click and create a new object. Let's again rename this object. I'm going to call it target. And instead of having this just be invisible inside of the editor, let's go ahead and add a gizmo. So we can do that down here in the right hand corner. We can hit the plus sign and this allows us to choose an effector gizmo. So first under the shape here, we can search for effector. And as you can see, there are some different ones. There is a ball, a cube, a circle, a locator and a square. I'm going to choose the ball effector for this one. I'm also going to set the size to something like 0.2. And now we can clearly see the target. Then we can go back to our head aim and simply assign this target as a source object. And it should actually work now, but under the settings, we have the possibility to limit how much our head can rotate, which is probably something we want to do because there is after all a limit to how far we can stretch our neck. It might not apply to this skeleton guy right here, but it's probably still going to look better if we add it. So under the minimum limit here, I'm going to put in minus 100. And as the maximum limit, I'm going to put in 100. So now we can only rotate 100 degrees in either direction. And that's it. If we now go ahead and play, we can see that our head immediately snaps to look at the target. And if I now change this target around, as you can see, our head just follows. Awesome. And we could of course put this target anywhere we'd like. We can have it follow around a player character. We could place it if something important is happening, say an explosion happens over here, we probably want the characters to notice. We can do so much with this stuff. And as you can see, it works perfectly as long as we don't get too far behind the character. Necks really aren't made to stretch this far and it does lead to some weird behavior. So for this, I would recommend adding some kind of script that reduces this effect if the target gets behind the character. Luckily, under the rig here, there is a weight. This allows us to control how much this constraint should influence our character. So if I go ahead and dial that down, we can see that our head is no longer being influenced by the weight. So what you could do is simply reduce this using a bit of code if the target gets too far behind the character. So weights make it really easy to control when to apply constraints. And we can actually control the weight of individual source objects as well. If we select the head aim, there is a weight slider here under the source objects also. Right now, for example, it looks a bit weird because only the head of our character is rotating. Normally, humanoid characters will rotate a bit of their chest and arms as well. So let's quickly add that using the weight slider. To do this, we can simply select our head aim and duplicate it. So I'm going to press Ctrl D. We can then rename this to chest aim. And instead of having a separate target for this, let's delete that. Let's take our target here and move it outside of these two. So it's a separate object. And let's also assign that to our chest. So now both our head aim and chest aim are using the same target. And what we can simply do is go into our chest aim and reduce the weight. So I'm going to put that down to something like 0.3. And instead of constraining the head here, let's go ahead and constrain the spine. So I'm going to take the spine one and drag that in instead. So now we have two multi-aim constraints affecting two different parts of the body with a different weight. And that means that if we play and move around our target, we can see that our entire body is now rotating a bit towards that target, which makes the movement seem a lot more natural. Awesome. And remember how I talked about that we could apply any kind of animation? Well, if I go into the animator now on this character, and change to a walk animation, it just works. Really cool.
Now, there are of course many more constraints that we can apply to achieve different results. One that I use a lot is the two bone IK constraint. This will allow us to have the arms and legs of our character probably bend to follow a target. So you can just imagine how useful that is. Let's try to set up one for the right arm. And we could of course add this inside of the same rig, but since we're affecting a completely different part of the body, let's go ahead and create a separate one. So we'll select our character, we'll go under animation rigging, and let's again press rig setup. As you can see, this adds another rig layer to our rig builder, and again, another object. And maybe we could rename these two to something other than rig one and two. Let's have the first one be head rig, and the second one be arm rig. Then inside of the arm rig, we can right click and create an empty object. Let's rename this one to arm mover. Let's hit add component, go under animation rigging, and select the two bone IK constraint. Now, as you can see, this takes in three bones instead of just one. And that's because it will apply some natural movement, so natural bending of the bones, as long as we have three bones in sequence. So in our case, we need the root, mid, and tip to be the bones that make up our arm. So let's go under our spine here, under the neck. Let's find our left arm. Here we have the upper arm, then the forearm, and then the hand. So let's start with the hand here and assign that to the tip. We're gonna assign the forearm to the mid and the upper arm to the root. Of course, we also need a source object. As you can see, the target is currently none. So let's go under our arm rig and arm mover here. Let's right click and create another empty object. Let's rename this one to target. And as you can see, our target is currently placed down here. Instead, we want this to be placed on the hand because we are going to be moving around our hand and arm with this object. So to snap it to our hand, we can simply select the target, then hold down control and select the hand, then go under animation rigging and hit align transform. And as you can see, the target immediately snaps to our hand. We also want to display this with a gizmo. So let's go to the bottom right corner and hit plus. Again, we can choose an effector shape. I'm going to search for effector. I'm going to choose the square effector. I'm going to set the size of this to something like 0.3. And there we go, we now have a square here that we can select and move around. And finally, let's go to the arm mover and assign this target. And that's it. If we now hit play, we can see that while our character is playing an animation, our hand is now remaining in place. And that means that we can actually select this target object here and move around our hand, even rotate it in any way that we'd like, and our arm will appropriately follow. Really, really cool. And a cool tip is actually to move the target while the game is running to somewhere you think looks cool, like here. And then just copying the placement by right-clicking on the transform and selecting copy world placement. We can then stop playing and go to the target, right-click on the transform and hit paste world placement. So if we hit play, indeed the arm goes right up. And we can use this for all kinds of things like placing the hands correctly when holding a weapon. Now, in our case, this is what we want, but sometimes we don't want the hand to snap to the target. Sometimes we want to just keep that offset. And in that case, we can go under the arm mover, go under settings, and under maintain target offset, we can choose whether to do that on position, rotation, or both. Just something that's good to know there. And again, we can adjust this using the weight slider. Imagine, for example, that all the skeletons are gathering and they want to check if everyone is present. John, are you there? I'm here. Of course, you can change the weight and position through script, you can change it through the animation window, and everything even works with timeline now as well, so you can just imagine the possibilities. And the good thing is that animation rigging runs on jobs, so it's very performant. One thing to note is that because it runs on jobs, you shouldn't reassign targets while the game is running. So if you need to change between following different objects, I would recommend creating a script that just moves the target to the right object. And of course, from here, it's up to you to start playing around with adding different constraints. As you can see, there are a lot to choose from. Luckily, they're all really well documented. We'll of course have a link to where you can learn more about them in the description. Another thing that is good to know is that multiple constraints within a single rig are applied based on their order in the hierarchy. So if you're working with multiple constraints in one rig, the top one will be applied first. In our case here, that's the head aim, and then the chest aim gets applied. The order of the rigs, however, are based on the order of the rig layers in the rig builder. So under our rig builder component in our character, here we can change the order of individual rigs. 
And if you need some good examples on how to use some of these constraints, you can simply go to the package in the package manager. And here we can look under samples. Let's import these. And this will create a Unity folder here with some constrained samples. And if we open up the scenes folder, we can see that there are lots of examples for the different ones. Of course, if you're using URP like me, you might have to update some of the materials. We can do that by going edit, render pipeline, universal render pipeline, upgrade project materials to universal and hit proceed. And then everything should show up. And as you can see, here's an example of two bone IK, one of the multi-aim, one for blending, one for IK on an entire chain of bones, one for parenting if you want to have objects follow your bones, and the list pretty much goes on. As you can see, it can get pretty crazy. Awesome. And that's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe and ring the notification bell so you don't miss the next one. We'll of course have links to where you can learn more about animation rigging in the description, including a GDC talk on some more advanced use cases. Other than that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in May and a special thanks to Face of Marify, Lost to Violence, Love Forever, Replica Studios, Nobby Ninja, SRT Mike, Jason Urutescu, Liu Lisset, Piano Southern Luck, Donatine Gascoigne, Dante Sam, Jacob Sanford, No. Kiwasaki, Mark Antoine Girard, Gregory Pierce, Michael Korobov, The Mighty Seuss, Owen Cooper, Elson the Fierce, Erasmus, and Sirius Wolf. You guys rock.